couple people here. Um, as I sat down and started live streaming, my trackpad died, so I had to go <laughs> grab a charger. But um, looks like we got a couple people. How's it going? The live broadcast is frozen. Hmm. Um, let me see. Let me know if it's still frozen or anything's not working. Um, should be good, but just let me know down in the comments. Awesome. Well, uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Um, I can try and um, make this a little faster. Let me see what we're doing. Uh, it should be streaming. I can take this down a little bit. But um, I'll kind of keep working on this in the background, try and smooth it out. Hopefully YouTube doesn't crash or anything. But uh, yeah, this is the first live stream where I am showing my webcam. Obviously, I've been doing a couple videos the last week or two um, with my webcam, or actually my camera over there. This camera, right here. Um, my Fuji, just filming on that. But thought it'd be fun to do a live stream, um, more of a hangout this, this day, because it's or this month, um, since we've been doing it once a month. Um, but yeah, one of my most requested videos is to cover what's on my Mac and to show all the apps and kind of my workflow. Um, so I figured I'd just kind of keep it open. There is just a lot to cover, so what I figured what we would do is if you have specific questions, like maybe the apps I use to edit or maybe where I get my fonts or anything kind of more specific like that, then I can definitely answer those questions. I'll kind of do a generic run through of the main apps I use, but if you have any more specific questions, be sure to ask them in the comments. So. Um, awesome. Well, <laughs> well, it's kind of confusing because I've got like the three monitors here. So the webcam's up here where I need to where I need to be looking, and then I've got YouTube here, and then OBS is over here live streaming. So it's a little over the top, but um, I have some music playing in the background. Let me know if it's too loud. Um, I'm running it pretty low, but if it's really distracting, just let me know and I'll bring it down. But um, Let's go ahead and switch over to my screen. Give me one second here. All right. Perfect. So I'm just gonna do a, like a very, very quick run through, just literally like what's in Finder. Um, there's a couple of things in here, quite a few apps. These are kind of things that I've just gathered through the years and you know, <laughs> it's kind of just, all over the place, random things that I needed for one specific app, those kind of things. Um, let's see if I can do this. There you go, now you can see me, hopefully. And we'll put that guy down here. So yeah, so this is um, my Finder. I've got quite a few apps, like I said. Um, most of all, I use you know Adobe apps, you guys know I use a ton. So I've got After Effects, I've got Illustrator, uh, Lightroom, in Photoshop Premiere. I really use um, probably Premiere and After Effects the most, or really After Effects is I found I'm mostly using for like very specific projects and mostly just for tutorials because I know a lot of people like tutorials and After Effects. So I've kind of been using it less over the years. Um, Premiere I use a ton, um, but Lightroom is something I just started using in the last six to eight months maybe just since I got my camera. I've been taking a lot of pictures. It's just a breeze to edit on. Probably the best app I've found that you can edit with photos. Of course, you could use, you know, Apple Photos or Photoshop or anything like that. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, that's just what I found that works. And plus, there's a lot more um, support for presets and those kind of things in Lightroom. So that's what I've been using to edit my photos. Um, just taking a look at the music is too loud. Okay, I'll just take it out almost entirely. It's at negative 45 dB in OBS, so I figured that would be pretty quiet, but apparently not. Um, 
All right, let me know if that's any better. Turn it down. So yeah, so Adobe Apps, Photoshop, Premiere, Lightroom, those are the big three, I would say. Um, compressor, I've just kind of started messing with um, like very, very recently. I've just downloaded Final Cut and um, the Compressor and Motion, those kind of group bundle of apps. So it's pretty cool, haven't done too much. Final Cut, like I said, um, this is like a huge, <laughs> like two camps. If you're, if you know anything about video editing, there's like very two distinct camps where it's like Premiere and then it's Final Cut. And this is like a huge debate. I'm gonna actually do a whole video on this in a couple of, well in the next couple of days, hopefully, um, just going over the differences between the two because there's some advantages over the two. Final Cut can be better in some areas and vice versa, Premiere is better than Final Cut. So right now I'm actually editing on both. I have um, edited a ton of projects on Premiere over the last few years, but I just started using FCP 10 um, in like the last few weeks. But I'll do a full review on that. If you have questions, just drop it in the comments and I'll, I'll try and answer them. Um, let's see, we've got uh, Flume I've mentioned that's like just sitting in my dock. That's what I use for Instagram and that's right there. And we've got, let's see here, Magnet. I did a review on that. This is super helpful for um, remembering or actually I get some of them confused. This is like, this is what snaps your different um, windows and apps into place. It's kind of like a Windows or Linux feature that like this app has. I actually think I missed one. DisplayMate is huge. Um, I get these so confused, y'all. There's so many apps that have like the same name. Let me double check what this is. Um, so DisplayMate is, let me see, I think it might be up here. I think DisplayMate, I'm fairly certain, is the app that like remembers the position of your um, Windows and apps, which is super helpful. I did a video on this entirely and I love that because it allows me to um, because I have my three monitors I can have certain apps and windows that just always stay there and in case they get moved around I can just snap them back into place. Um, SIP is a huge tool I use a lot when I'm doing stuff like design and Photoshop I can grab the colors um, and if you have never used that I'll just do a quick thing Basically, it sits in your menu bar and you can do, you grab this little magnifying glass and then you can just pick any color. So if I click that on my screen, then that would stay and you can see it, it just kind of comes up with random names, which is pretty cool. But then you can grab like the hex code, the RGB. So if you're doing like development, like HTML, CSS, it's kind of helpful. Um, but yeah, that's, I use that a ton. It's basically like the built-in uh, Apple color picker like you have in Pages or Keynote, you know, just you can use it over across any app. So that's tons of fun to have. Uh, Spam sieve is super helpful. I know this is not the most exciting thing to talk about because it's just like filtering spam. I'm actually gonna be doing a video on like three ways to filter your spam and cut down on like getting junk email. This is definitely one of them. I use this app every day and there's actually a way you can hide it from the dock. So it actually is running, it's just not showing up showing up in the dock, which is super helpful because it's just like if you're not using it, it just kind of runs in the background. There's no need to have it there. Um, so that's super helpful to have. Uh, Spotify is my main music player. You may notice from my dock, uh, well, like what's in my dock video, I had uh, Apple Music and or iTunes and Spotify in there and I've kind of switched over to Spotify entirely again. Just don't really love what Apple Music has to offer. I think it just has a little bit of a ways to go. And that's kind of it. I mean, as far as main apps go, you know, there's uh, Toggle is super helpful for tracking time. It's not like the most fun thing. Um, and webcam settings. I use that just whenever I'm filming a video with my webcam. And those are really all the apps. I think uh, music wise, I use, uh, or sound and music wise, Noisio, I still use almost every day. This video, I made a video on this like two or three years ago. And basically, if you don't know, it's just a kind of set of and collection of sounds. So it's like coffee shop, you know, people talking in a coffee shop or like ocean waves or like birds singing, you know, just background noises. And you can mix and match them however you want. But it's just super helpful to like have some background noise. I just have to have something in order to focus. Still use that across both my Macs to this day. Um, and then for music, I'm using 
uh, like to produce music, I'm using Logic Pro, and that's really my main driver. And then in, anytime I'm like doing live stuff, like on stage, that's I'm using Ableton. If you're interested, so uh, those are really the big apps. I'm trying to think if I missed anything. I know that was super quick. I'm just trying to do a brief overview, so it's not like really boring. Um, let me take a look at the comments. Music is good, okay, awesome. Making progress. I will be doing some Final Cut Pro tutorials. I, I'm i trying to do it quickly because I love to be able to, it's kind of a weird balance because I don't want to spend like a year using Final Cut and then it just becomes so natural to, so natural to me that I can't explain it to a beginner. But I also don't want to do, you know, use it for a day and then miss some things where I could explain it better if that that makes any sense. So I'm working hard on it now. I'm trying to use it like almost every day or for every project. Um, I was working on a new episode for the vlog just on Thursday and I got halfway through editing on Final Cut and I just completely quit. I like switched over to Premiere. I just like started all over. It was so much easier to do that and I saved way more time like starting over than I would have like working in Final Cut. So I've got a little ways to go in Final Cut but um, once I, I'm trying to figure it out in a way that like if you're coming from Premiere or maybe even Final Cut 7 or iMovie, you know, or just a regular editing app, any other editing app, then you would be able to understand it. So that's why I'm, I'm taking so long. But yes, definitely tutorials to come. Do I use any automation like Keyboard Maestro? I don't think I do. I've heard of um, Hazel. That sounds really familiar, but I'll have to look at that. Um, recommend trying the first two. Okay, yeah, I'll take a look at those two. Thanks for the thanks for the rec. Recommendations for a beginner 2D animation video making. Um depends on what you're doing. It really does. I can switch this over. Let's do just so that you can see the face. So, um I would recommend figuring out what it is you need to do. Like if you don't really know, don't go spend like a ton of money on After Effects or some like really intense or really expensive software, definitely not like C4D. Now, if you're a student, um, maybe you can, you know, drop down more specifics. Like if you're a student or whatever, there are tons of educational licenses. You can get, um, you can get like C4D for like 300 bucks. Uh, there's tons of Creative Cloud discounts. I, I think I pay like 30 bucks a month for the entire Adobe suite because I'm a student. Um, so obviously you have to be a student to have it, but then if you are, you get a huge discount. Um, so yeah, I would recommend what you're doing. Like Apple Motion isn't bad for like just basic stuff. I used to use it, you know, a few years ago. It's been a while since I last opened it. Um, but that's like 40 or 50 bucks. And if you're just doing that, then, you know, if you're just doing basic animation, you can get a lot done in motion. And then I would say like, as you get better and better, then upgrade your software. Don't like just start with After Effects, unless you are trying to do something very specific and, or if it's like your job, you know, you have to use it like every day, then obviously you should get it. Um, so yeah, I think motion is a great way, place to start um, for just basic stuff. Um, obviously you have to have a Mac, but you know, if you're on the Mac Square live stream, I'm assuming you do. So, uh, iCloud Drive, Dropbox, and Google Drive. This is like a huge, um, this is like a huge debate in my opinion because like there's just so much difference between. I mean, there is a lot of difference. There's also not a lot of difference between the three. Like in the end, they're just giving you storage. It's a matter of do you need just tons of space, or do you need it to be like quick? Or do you need to be sharing with people? Or are you collaborating? Um, the new uh, Google Drive, if you are aware, has like two new modes. So there's basically like uh, backup and sync, which is kind of like the consumer, like everyday person who's, it used to be like Google Drive, it's just pretty much the same, but you can like back up certain folders, even your whole hard drive, I think. Um, so that's just like the same, but then there's Team Drive, which if you're working, you know, um, I don't know if it's really for schools, but for like work and stuff, um, I know my church has it. And it's super helpful because we used to have 
one regular Google Drive folder, which had like tons of creative resources, like, um, you know, Photoshop files, Illustrator, we had even had like whole video projects and videos in there. And I think the whole folder was like two or 300 gigs. So it was really tough to sync the whole thing um, or sync those whole folders. But now with Team Drive, basically the way it works is it's pretty similar to like the way um, those cloud services work on your phone where it's not actually syncing, it's just like viewing the files and then whenever you need it, it'll like pull it down and then resync it. Um, that's just kind of like a brief explanation. I'm not, and that's pretty much the most of my knowledge of it, explaining the behind the scenes, but it works really well. Um, it's, it's kind of messy to have all three. I know that I'm gonna go really in depth in this, but um, iCloud Drive, basic synopsis, iCloud Drive, is really perfect for backing up your iOS devices. It's nice to sync across your Macs and stuff. But if you're working with other people, Google Drive would be my go-to. You get a lot of storage. It's just easy to work with Google Docs. Um, and then Dropbox would just be kind of my last resort. Like, I just use Dropbox these days because I'm so I have so much stuff in it that it's not worth my moving it over. So I just have like the terabyte. I think is like the lowest paid plan. Um, Free option wise, I think Google Drive is probably the best. Um, in terms of money, iCloud Drive offers the most space for the least cost. And that's my answer to that question. <laughs> um, let me know also if the if the camera is lagging at all. I've got, it looks like really smooth over here, but on YouTube it's kind of laggy. So just let me know. Uh, character rigging. No, I've done very, very little of it like a year or two ago, and I think I ended up just buying a template. Um, there is a YouTube channel called Mount Mograph. I, that's where I learned a ton of my After Effects uh, skills and stuff. He has some awesome tutorials, and he does a couple of things on character rigging, if you're interested. So I would check, out, check him out. It's M-T and then M-O-G-R-A-P-H, Mount Mograph. So that's what I would look at. Photoshop versus Affinity Photo, you know, I think whenever, like there's every few kind of months and years, like these new apps just kind of come up and everyone, it's like a big trend, everyone wants to switch over, like Instagram versus, uh, what's that, uh, Vero, I think it's called, or whatever, like it's just a trend, you know, it's gonna probably go away, like Photoshop versus Pixelmator, Photoshop versus Affinity, I think it all comes down to like what you're used to and if you're if you're like in what you're doing like I'm so used to using Photoshop I know it fairly well and I've been using it for six or seven years now so I'm I'm good with it I can work really quickly it's not worth my time to switch over to another app at this point but I think Pixelmator and, and I haven't messed with Affinity Photo I've seen a couple things on it um, but those kind of apps are they're cool, and I think if you're just getting started, like someone was asking about the mo or animation, like if you're just getting started, those are pretty great alternatives. In fact, Pixelmator just released a new, uh, I think it's called Pixelmator Pro, and I think it's a little bit more, it's like 70 or 80 bucks, um, and it's got like a ton of new features, and I think you can get a trial for it, so if you wanna mess around with that, it'd be pretty cool. I'm the same. I cannot draw to save my life. It's kind of funny because I do a lot of design work, but that's very much like graphic design in Photoshop. It's like, uh, you know, flat, more like UX design is kind of what I've been doing my whole design career, but I cannot, cannot draw. So that's why I just get templates for that. Video is lagging. Okay. Let me double check this. See if that's any better, hopefully. All right, there you go. I think the keyframe interval or something, whatever that means was set to like a specific number and it wasn't on auto. So hopefully that'll fix it. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that's fixing the lagging.
Um, with to do apps, I I've really settled into using Trello the last couple of days. Um, or days, months, really. Just for this semester, I just started freshman year at college, so um, I found that it works really well. It's simple, it's not like, there's actually a ton of features that I don't use in it. I just don't need a ton of features when it comes to a to-do app. It's, you know, I, I use it for very simple things. Like I just, at the beginning of the week, I'll like plan out everything I need to do for school. And then um, for like Mac Square stuff, I have just like two big boards of like ideas and then like immediate to do's like I need to revise this thumbnail or I need to email this person you know and that's like all I need I use like two boards it's like the free plan and so there are like I know a ton of people like like to have very specific to do list the problem with me like I am a pretty organized person but it just takes a lot of work to like maintain that um, and then I just I'm never able to keep it up but if you're interested in looking at to do apps like more advanced apps, my friend uh, Key Productive, um, I'll actually pull up his channel here. Uh, Francesco from Key Productive, he just did a video and he does tons of videos on to do apps. I'm just gonna pull this up for a quick second. So he just did a video on, here you go. So Toodle Do, that's a review. Um, but he just did one I'm trying oh yeah four new to-do list apps um, and he does th like those kind of videos almost every week so if you're interested in like productivity apps definitely check out his channel one of the best I've seen the most organized um, and he's just a cool guy fun to listen to knows what he's doing so keep productive maybe I can put this in chat and then y'all can click on it but um, But yeah, so Key Productive is probably the answer to that. I think that's a little out of my realm. I don't want to like recommend any apps because I don't know them too well. Um, oh, you know him? That's cool. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Uh, so I completely stopped using Twitter for Mac. Like <laughs> a couple things, couple reasons why I um, had it open. Like it's one of those apps you just leave open, and, and I came back like. It was running overnight and I came back the next morning and like my whole computer had been running at like some crazy like 150, 200% CPU because Twitter like got stuck in a loop and it like couldn't up, I couldn't like refresh the data or something or all the new tweets and stuff. It was super dumb, but it basically like crashed my computer. So I, and then the other thing, and that didn't even like turn me off to it. I was like trying to, I think, edit my profile picture, like very simple, and the app just froze like more than five or 10 times. And so I just completely removed it. I still have Flume there, but I'm, I pretty much just use Twitter on my phone. Um, so yeah, I, kinda, I mean, I think if I were to use it, I just use TweetBot. Um, and I, and I use, use it on the web app mostly, probably, like on my computer. Um, so I have not been super happy with ScreenFlow the last couple of weeks. It, um, you may have seen my tweet, uh, the other day I was like, <laughs> literally editing on a toaster would be more efficient or something like that. And it was very painful. I think I had some, you know, big project, like 30 minutes of footage to edit down to like a five minute video. and. And it, the problem is it would like, I would save it and then it would just randomly crash and not keep all the work that I just saved. And, you know, it would lose like a couple of hour or a couple of like 20, 30 minutes of work, which when you're editing is a ton of, you know, you're making tons of adjustments. And then one thing that really bugged me is that the transitions wouldn't like render in the app. So when you were like, if you had a clip, like I had my intro, you know, and then I like crossfade into the clip it would like start at the intro and then it would just like jump cut to my screen or you know my face or whatever which is super annoying when you're trying to like time it with the music and make sure it's smooth and that would happen on multiple occasions and I know it's not my computer this is like brand new I've got all the CPU you could need um, plus I just started working with um, my camera you know I'm working with 4k footage now on top of my 5k iMac so I've kind of started editing in um, more advanced apps, but I'm gonna do a full video on that, on like whether ScreenFlow is worth it. So I, I'm not 
saying anything yet. Um, it is just a little buggy, is all I'm going to say for now. Um, default Mac apps that I use. Um, hmm. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, let's see. I gotta like refresh my memory. Um, I mean, there's not tons. Uh, image capture, like this is super lame, but I use image capture to bring in um, like photos and videos from my iPhone. Cause I'm just, I'm not, I don't really trust AirDrop or um, I don't like bringing stuff over the cloud because a, if I'm like relying on that and then I delete it from the cloud, like that was the only source. I just like have backup. So I use image capture to bring in uh, all the footage and photos from my uh, iPhone or my iPad. Like I just finished a vlog for my other channel, for my vlog channel, um, and the entire thing was shot, the entire trip was shot on my phone. So it was like 600 videos, like 200 a day pretty much, and I brought them all into my computer and just back them up. So image capture, I use, um, I still use the default mail app, uh, mail client. I know I've done air, like reviews on air mail and um, a couple other, I can't even think of it. Like there's so many, but I just always end up settling into mail, mainly because I use spam sieve, like I said, for filtering spam. Um, I'll use, if we're just talking like built-in apps, I still use notes like every day. Like it just sits on my other monitor and that's where I have like, I just copy and paste stuff or I'll just write quick notes. It's always open. Uh, pages I use a little bit for school. I don't use Safari. You guys know I use Chrome. I'm trying to think. Um, Keynote, like yeah, like I work like Keynote pages and numbers. I use like for specific cases, like numbers I use for school for like spreadsheet stuff. Uh, usually because like I have to download a file and it's easier to open it in than like open in Google Drive. Um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much, those are pretty much the only default apps I use. Um, alternative to ScreenFlow, I would say if you're okay with editing on iMovie, which is a free built-in app, you could probably get away with using uh, QuickTime and which is built in and just screen record your computer and save the file, bring it into iMovie, do very some very basic edits and you can actually just upload straight to YouTube if that's, or Vimeo I think if that's what you're doing. Because that's that's really, like if that's all you need, it's not worth the 130 bucks for ScreenFlow. Excuse me. Um, and I've, I've tried a couple like Camtasia and other ones, I've just I think also I was so used to ScreenFlow that I'd rather just use QuickTime. A USB Ethernet and SD port. Um, there isn't a USB Ethernet port. Like, do you mean a like a USB two Ethernet like adapter? Because I'm I have a Ethernet port that I'm actually plugged in, I'm like hardwired into. Um, I don't have an SD port, which kind of sucks, at least not on my iMac. I have like a, actually it's right here, just have like a little SD card adapter. But I do have one on my MacBook, it's the first time I brought this in. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this, but look at like the SD card right like here. You see that little like chip that's inside there. So that's a uh, 200 and f or just 205 or something gigs of storage. It's just a micro SD card. I can actually take it out. Um, this is probably the best purchase I've ever made on a Mac. And this is the whole thing. Like that's the adapter and that's not even the card. Like the card sits inside. I don't want, I can't really take it out because it's like pretty wedged in there. But like that's the whole thing. And that's, I believe, 200 gig. It's not 256, but it's like 200. Because I was like running out of storage on my Mac, on like my laptop. So I ended up buying this. It was like 150 bucks. But you can get like 512 gigs versions. Um, but it's pretty cool. Like this is probably the best thing I've ever bought on my Mac. 
I know that wasn't really your question, but that was, that was really cool. Uh, clipboard managers. I used Paste. If you guys remember my video on that, maybe uh, oof, three years ago, and um, that was really cool. Like I, I think it's a cool tool to use. Like if you're, I mean, I feel like if anyone on a Mac is constantly copying things, um, I just I never really got into it. I think it's an awesome thing and feature for other people. Paste is one of the best ones I used. Been a while since I've used clipboard managers, but it's pretty neat. You can, you know, have a whole history which of links and anything you've copied, which is awesome. You can even do like attachments and stuff. Um, so it, it's awesome. I just never really integrated it. Um, I, I probably could, like, I like just give it another shot. But yeah. Screen flow, giving you zoom. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm assuming you're talking about like compared to iMovie. Um, I know like iMovie's like set up with like the weird snap thing and the trimming and all those things. It's kind of difficult to get used to if you haven't used it before. Um, it's easy to get, like, screen flow is, it's a really nice interface. It's probably one of the nicest, like, third party, cheaper end. Uh, video editors out there that like works pretty well except for like random bugs and I've been on their support too many times and they're like yeah just like you know delete the cache files restart enter this into terminal and like it usually works for like a couple days but then I just also don't want to have to keep doing that like every time I have a bug you know every like couple days or every couple weeks having to do that is kind of a pain um, so yeah, it's not it's not the best for those things, but but if you already have ScreenFlow, I didn't know if you owned it. Um, then yeah, I mean I would just stick with it. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to read all the comments. Let's see, oh yeah, Alfred, I have um, I haven't used Alfred in a while. I think. Like, it was really cool before Spotlight Search got, like, really good. And I think it was, uh, someone help me, uh, Yosemite? Like, the whole flat, flat design thing, like, the, when they switched all the design. I think it was Yosemite. You can just tell me which version it was. Um, that's when Spotlight got, like, really, really powerful. Like, the built-in calculator, you can search, you know, like Safari throughout your documents, you like track an airplane or whatever, and all those kind of things. And that's kind of when I stopped using Alfred, but I some of my friends still use it. Um, but I didn't know they had a clipboard manager. That's pretty cool. I don't use two-factor authentication. No, it's just kind of boring. I'd rather <laughs> take the risk than like I probably should. I'd rather like take the risk. Yosemite, okay, cool. That's what I thought, I just wasn't sure. I mean, there's so many names, like, what was before you? Was it Mountain Lion? Or is, it was uh, Mavericks, who? Yeah, it was like Mountain Lion, Mavericks, Yosemite, El Capitan? Uh, what are we on now? Sierra, hi Sierra, that's right. Um, that's, yeah, there's so many versions. Um, but yeah, those are, those are fun to remember. Yeah, I mean, if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. If you have specific questions on, like, um, the specific apps that I mentioned, you know, feel free to drop them down below. But that's kind of the summary. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, just looking at my menu bar, really, that's where I get tons of my... Most of my apps sit. Um, yeah, those are pretty much. That's pretty much everything. So, um, who? Which version of macOS was best? Uh, 
Man, I've I've been using Mac since like Snow Leopard. I mean, or like Leopard. I think was like the earliest version. I had like a like an iBook G4. Like someone someone go look that up. That was <laughs> that was a old. That's an old MacBook. Um, and that's not even a MacBook. It's an iBook. Um, it was like very square, and it had like the round like power cord. That was great. Um, but but yeah, like that was a great laptop. I was using, I think it must have been Leopard or something. I think that's the oldest. It's probably the oldest I can remember. Like I think Tiger goes before it. I never had that. Um, I think like. There's always, like, with Apple, Mac OS, there's, like, big jumps, you know, there's, like, you know, there's always, like, the ink, I mean, you, it's probably intentional, but they have, like, Leopard, and then Snow Leopard, and then they have, you know, Sierra, and then High Sierra, or Lion, Mountain Lion, and so, like, there's the big jumps, Lion to, like, Sierra, or, or Yosemite, or whatever, and, like, those are really fun like the ones between are just like oh cool like you get a couple extra features it's more stable um those are fun i think the switch to yosemite um is probably was probably my favorite just because of the flat design and i that was one that i actually became like a developer for like i joined the developer program just to download it in beta um and i think they even had like public beta i just didn't want to wait but it was pretty buggy. That was probably the most buggy because of all the new like uh, GUI stuff they were implementing. But but yeah, that was tons of fun. I loved Yosemite. Um, standalone license versus subscription. This is a fun question because I think it varies per app. Like for the Creative Cloud, it makes probably the most sense to do subscription, at least for me, because I'm paying like 30 bucks a month. I get access to every Adobe Creative Cloud app and unlimited updates, you know, as they come out. And I get access to Typekit, which I get all my font, a lot of my fonts from. Um, that is so, so much fun because A, each of those apps are really expensive. And B, I can also cancel them at any time. Like, I think even a few years ago, I found that I like wasn't really using those apps for a few months. So I cancel it and I saved, you know, like 90 bucks or whatever. Um, and I didn't have to use it again, you know, if you after a certain amount of years you probably pay it off but um, in, in this case where they're like constantly rolling out updates It makes sense to have a subscription because then you're not having to like upgrade a whole new license um, Now there are cases where I would much rather buy a license like um you know, with ScreenFlow, it's nice to just buy the license and then you do get discounts for upgrades, but that's because they're not upgrade or, you know, up rolling out updates. But then there's even things like on my phone, like I really hate having to have a subscription service. Um, I'm trying to think in my, so like apps for social um, planning, I did one, I did a review on that in or Insta preview, in preview and I'm just pulling it up now and to go premium yeah three months is seven bucks and six months is 14 bucks like that just doesn't make sense to me like for an app like that I'd rather spend like five dollars and own it and then never have to think about it again I don't want to have to like go premium and you know do all those plans and there's I found like that's a really like maybe maybe it's not but I feel like this is a new trend that's happening especially on like iOS devices like I was down like looking through apps and stuff and they were free to download and then to get access to like 90% of the features it wasn't even like an in-app purchase it was a subscription service which I really didn't like but um, what do you guys think I mean do you prefer having a license or do you prefer to have a subscription for it that's it's always been interesting to me Well, cool, it's been 40 minutes, it tells 41 minutes. So this is an awesome live stream, um, m much more casual. Like I said, I think I like just hanging out with you guys, like answering your questions. Um, really love being able to connect with you guys. Don't forget to check out um, the Discord group if, you've, if you're not a part of it already. 
I am posting like some fun tips and tricks in there, but also you can ask me questions just like this. If you don't feel like waiting to the next live stream, um, you can ask me questions there. You can post suggestions for videos, excuse me, and I'll definitely respond as quick as I can. Um, also, if you didn't watch my face reveal video, excuse me, water makes me burp, y'all. I don't know, like above any other beverage. Um, <laughs> But yes, if you didn't watch my face reveal video, I announced that I have a vlog channel and I did it separately just because I didn't want people to feel like they had to watch my vlog on this channel. So that's separate. It's more of like travel vlogs. I just got back from Disney. So um, the first day of that trip is up as of yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Um, so yeah, if you want to see more of a different view of my life or whatnot, then be sure to check that out. Um, I used Windows for six, well, yeah. I, I mean, I used Windows for a few years before. Um, so we moved into this house, my family moved into this house when I was seven going on eight, like it was between birthdays. And in that old house, I remember having like the tower PC and for like a couple of years, and I just played like video games on it. So it wasn't like super and like used, you know, Microsoft Paint or something. And so that was pretty much the only thing I used it for. But it's like, it really, I know I'm probably sounding like a broken record, but it, like with anything, it depends what you're using it for. Like if all you're doing is gaming, like I would definitely recommend getting a PC because you can customize it as much as you want. You can swap out you know, any of the components as new components are released and become available or as your budget increases. Um, you can upgrade the monitor separately, you know, you can get a lot more power for generally, a, you know, cheaper than you would on a Mac. Um, however, it depends. Like if, if all you're doing is strictly video gaming and maybe video editing, then I would recommend doing it on a PC if you're trying to get just tons of power and like CPU power for a little bit cheaper. Anything else in my opinion I would use a Mac just because it's a much much simpler OS to use and I just prefer it but um, yeah I mean that's probably what I would say. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to read this last question. Um, do you mean like you prefer, I would prefer the app just on, or like I prefer the version of the app when it's on Mac, like the Mac version? Is that what you're asking or is it? Sorry, I don't really understand it. Because there are apps like um, Premiere and well, like the Adobe suite, like all the like a Photoshop, After Effects, and Premiere you can use on Mac or PC. So if like those are the only apps you're using, then it makes sense. Like if you'd rather just use get more power and you're not like set on using your Mac for or using your computer for like iMessage and mail and stuff. Like if you're just wanting to edit, um, Sarah Dietschy just did, if you have heard of her, she's a New Yorker, vlogger, tech enthusiast. Um, she just did a video a couple of days ago on uh, a PC versus her MacBook Pro, I believe. Um, and she did like a render test between, um, you know, she just like edited the video and then rendered it out. And I think the PC did way better than her MacBook Pro. Now, granted, she was comparing it to a laptop, like she's not comparing it to an iMac Pro or an iMac, but if you have a, a MacBook and you're editing and you're frustrated, but you can't afford an iMac, maybe look at getting a PC, because those apps um, those apps are pretty useful, I mean, because they can go across both operating systems. Yeah, so, it, yeah, it just kind of depends on what you're doing, what apps you're using, those kind of things, but. Well, it has been almost 46 minutes. Um, that's pretty much 
everything I can offer you guys. <laughs> if you have any last questions, I'm, um, I'm happy to answer them or drop them in the Discord. Um, I think there's a link below if you're interested in checking that out. But this was a very successful eighth, eighth live stream uh, for Max Squared. So we've been doing this for a while now. I think, what do we start in like August or something for, yeah, something like that or June or something like that. But this has been tons of fun. I'm definitely keep doing it. If you guys are interested, maybe we could do this uh, like bi-weekly, like every two weeks or um, twice a month, something, you know, like that. Um, but let me know. These are tons of fun. I love answering y'all's questions and connecting with you, hanging out. So, yeah. Well, uh, if nothing else, I will see you guys in the next video dropping on Monday, of course. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. But thanks so much for joining, guys. It's been fun talking to you. And I will see you in the next one. See ya.